Welcome back to Moorway South. I've bought a couple of new locomotives, the identity of which I'm not going to reveal yet. That'll be the next couple of videos. But however, uh, sorting those out and fitting DCC chips is going to require running in. Um, as you may have seen on my previous videos, that's done with the Hornby 12 volt controller, DC controller, and I use uh, the outer loop of the layout. Most of the time, my layout is covered in stuff. Um, I use it as a kind of workshop because I haven't got scenery put on. I can easily lay stuff everywhere, so it's used for storage and doing stuff. So it means clearing the loop if I want to run a locomotive and a DC for running in. And while having a locomotive running around the loop, there's a risk of derailment on the points that are found on the track. So in order to make life easier, I've invested in these rolling road items, which are from DCC Concepts. Um, this particular set I bought is a set of four, um, and I thought about it with my locomotives, and then I realised I probably need actually six as a minimum, so I've got two extra spare ones. The packs come in four, eight or twelve. Um, and I generally looked at my locomotives and I figured even the ones with the most wheels like my Duchess of Sutherland steam engine I could get away with six having three for the tender where the electrical pickup is and three on the driving wheels and the other guide wheels could be left hanging and for my locomotives the most axles they would have is six which would be three on each of the two bogies so hence I bought an extra two to go with the four to make up six. Now the cost of these, it varies depending on what deals are going on, but it's around about 10 to 12 pounds per uh, axle. So a pack of four was I think something like 44 pound and the two was 20 odd quid. So you're looking at, for 60, you're looking at 60 to 70 pounds. Um, that seems like a lot of money, but um, I'm gonna go in and show you some detail about the engineering involved and that'll help explain why they're relatively expensive and also they should last a long time you only need to buy them once. The obvious advantage of using these while I'm running in a locomotive for perhaps up to an hour is I don't have to have it running around the track so I don't have to clear the track of any obstructions and also there's no chance of a derailment and I can safely go away and have make a cup of tea and I'll be quite happy that it's going to stay where it is and keep on running. Now this particular set from uh, DCC Concepts is marketed as multi-gauge uh, for use in uh, OO, HO, N scales and multiple other scales listed here. Obviously I'm only running at double O gauge and I have no plans to change to another scale uh, but somebody using these might have multiple formats they want to use. They are available from other manufacturers um, in a single size, single gauge. Um, but they're roughly the same price. So I figured I'd get these because I keep my options open, but also I know that DCC Concepts are good quality equipment and uh, worth buying. So this pack comes with four of the rolling road axles and lots of items, uh, extra bits and pieces. I believe that these um, power connectors and rails are for tracks running a third power rail although there's no actual instructions here to explain how to use them, but I don't have that, so I'm gonna not worry about those. Um, you can see here in the pack, these are the extra blocks which are used to set up the rolling road for other gauges. So the basic principle is that rolling road axle sits on the track and the blue plastic block acts as a separator of the correct distance between the tracks so it sits in the correct place and then power comes up through these metal side blocks into the wheels at the top. So by changing the plastic block you can change the separation of the rolling axles and that's achieved by unscrewing the side plates from the bottom of the plastic and then changing the, the block to give you a different separation. Now obviously I'm not going to be um, changing those but I have noticed that I did undo one of these screws and it is a self-tapping screw and this is fairly soft plastic. So you have to be really careful if you do change it and tighten that up, don't over tighten it because you would soon rip the hole out of that plastic there and it, then you would have great difficulty in um, 
screwing these back in. But that's not a problem for me because I'm just going to leave them exactly as they are. As I mentioned earlier, these are roughly £10-£12 each. And you might think that's a lot of money for a bit of plastic and some bits of metal, but actually when you look at this in detail, it's been really nicely engineered. The tolerance in, the separation is good, there's no movement on the track. And in particular, these wheels have got really good bearings in them. There's no play in the outer wheel at all. Real good, smooth rolling action, very low friction. So it's obviously been well made. And so ultimately, whilst I thought I was paying quite a high price, I think in the end, it's going to be good value for money. So operation of the rolling wood is simply a case of placing each block onto the track at the right separation for the axles and then placing the locomotive more carefully on top. As I said earlier, power comes up through the rails into the block and then through the bearing wheels. So you've got power being supplied to all the wheels that are sitting on these rolling road axles. So here they are running. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Duchess of Sutherland running using all six rolling road axles with the smaller wheels underneath the locomotive just hanging loose. I could have packed those up with some card or something, but they seem to hang quite nicely. Obviously the tender is where the power pickup is, so it's important that they're sitting on the rolling road too. My diesel locomotive currently with the most axles is this Class 47 which has three axles per bogey, so six in total. Um, and as you can see, it sits on here quite nicely and will even run at full speed. So overall, I'm really pleased with these DCC Concepts Rolling Road. Um, I've got six. If I need to buy any more, I will get some spares. But as I said, um, the purpose of buying these is for running in locomotives and the next two videos will be my new locomotives. If you subscribe, you'll get a notification of when those videos have been put on. And as ever, feel free to leave any comments or questions below uh, and come back soon for the next videos.